According to Ukraine, it sees no sign that Russia is leaving Kherson without a fight. Amid fears in Kyiv that Moscow's heavily staged managed announcement of retreat is a carefully laid trap. Giving up Kherson, the capital of a region Vladimir Putin annexed to Russia, and a key checkpoint on the road to Crimea is the most humiliating loss his military has suffered. Now, our chief correspondent, John Cookson, has the story. There's a Kiev-imposed news blackout in the Kherson region, so images on social media are the only evidence we have so far of a Russian withdrawal. Ukrainian forces discovering abandoned Russian checkpoints and military equipment. Ukrainian troops are said to be moving carefully, suspecting they may be being drawn into a Russian trap. And these are allegedly ferries transporting civilians to the right bank of the Dnipro River, away from the Ukrainian advance, taking them to Russian-held territory. The ferry passes a damaged bridge shelled by the Ukrainians. Russia's dramatic announcement of withdrawal from Kherson city came in a staged TV debate. General Sergei Sarovkin saying, Kherson and nearby settlements can't be properly supplied and function. People's lives are constantly in danger. The enemy is firing indiscriminately at the city. Prohibited methods of warfare may be used. The regional administration decided to evacuate the population. What's happened to Kherson City's 400,000 citizens isn't known. The Russians have been evacuating them during the last few weeks. Military experts are suspicious of Russia's motives. It could be that it's a genuine withdrawal in order to regroup, recover, reinforce and be prepared to attack at some point in the future um, in, in, that, in that area. Or, or otherwise, um, it could be a ruse to withdraw. Let's face it, we've also heard that most of the civilian population have withdrawn from Kherson. Um, maybe it's a ruse to encourage the Ukrainians to advance, such that the Russians could launch a counteroffensive with armoured forces, and heaven forbid that they could possibly launch an attack with tactical nuclear weapons in the open ground around Kherson. It's hard to track the whereabouts of evacuated civilians. The Ukrainians fear many may have been transported to Russia already. John Cookson, Arise News. And John Cookson joins us now from London for more. Good day, John, and thank you so much for joining us. Now, so many mixed feelings around this. Now, what are you hearing about the announced uh, Russian withdrawal from Kherson? And could this really be a turning point in the war? It could be if the Russians uh, withdraw, and just let's explain why. Kherson City was the first major uh, regional capital that the Russians seized when the war began. Uh, uh, they, they seized it in March uh, of, of this year and have uh, held on to it ever since. They've heavily fortified Kherson City. They have special forces there and a lot of military equipment. So it, it was a jewel in the crown, if you like, of uh, uh, Putin's I I invasion. And he declared the region only recently uh, as part of Russia permanently. So to, so to give it up is a major setback uh, for, for the Russians. And because it's such a, a, a profound thing to happen, that's why there's so much skepticism about uh, why Putin has decided to do the, that at this time. Let's take a look at a, a quick map to uh, see what, um, what we're talking about here. And hopefully the director can pull the map up uh, to show us uh, uh, where the Russian forces were. Uh, they were in Kherson city and, and, and a region close uh, to Kherson. There we are, that's the right map. And you see the area uh, in, in stripes there, pink stripes. That's the area that the Russians are withdrawing from. A, a big chunk of land, about 13,000 square kilometers in total. And they're heading south to south of the Dnipro River uh, and are digging in uh, there on, on, on the south bank, uh, the in Ukrainian forces retaking land uh, to the north. So you can see how significant uh, uh, that is. And it, it, it is a major development uh, uh, if indeed this withdrawal takes place. Now, 
We haven't uh, been able to get any images yet of uh, Russian troops actually withdrawing. The ones that I used in my report are the only ones that are available on social media, and they only show civilians uh, leaving Kherson city, and they've been leaving uh, for, for weeks now. Now, how the military uh, are, are, are getting across the Dnipro, that's the Russian military, we, we just don't know. And also, how, what state have they left Kherson city in? Have they mined it? Have they left booby traps in, in, in government departments? To uh, 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 And could there even be Russian special forces still left behind to attack the Ukrainians uh, uh, should they enter the city? And they haven't, uh, they haven't entered the city yet. So all these questions will be answered in, in the coming days. But the, the, there's a huge amount of skepticism uh, about the Russian withdrawal. We had Richard Dan out there in my report suggesting that uh, the Russians might use it as a ruse to use tactical nuclear weapons on the, on the Ukrainians. I would disagree with that. Uh, the thing about using a tactical nuclear weapon in that area means that the fallout, the radiation, would drift into Russian territory. So, uh, uh, fortunately, you might say, I, I don't think the Russians will uh, use a tactical nuclear weapon in that particular area. They might use it elsewhere, for example, further uh, to the west uh, in Odessa or, or north of there. Uh, so uh, uh, all eyes really now on what's happening in Kherson city, and uh, we're still waiting for the first images of a Russian troop withdrawal. Well, thank you, John, for giving us that vivid um, picture of the withdrawal. But why are military experts so skeptical of Russia's motives? Yeah, that's a good good question. Uh, it was announced on st state TV in a heavily staged uh, event. Uh, uh, General Sirotkin talking casually, almost, with uh, the Russian defense minister about the pros and cons of staying in Kherson city and them, them agreeing that it will be a good idea for Russian forces to withdraw because the city is hard to defend and uh, civilians were also at risk. So, so it was portrayed to the Russian people as a gesture of goodwill uh, by the Russians. But, you know, Sorovkin is not a man of goodwill. This is a man who has uh, dropped bombs on civilians uh, in various parts of Syria during that bitter civil war, and also in Grozny, the, the, the capital uh, uh, of the Russian region in the Second Chechen War uh, back in the day. So th th this is a, not a man w with a heart. Uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons why there's so much skepticism about uh, the motives of, uh, of uh, this announced Russian withdrawal, which we haven't seen yet. That's right. Now, and, and understandably, that's why we see President Zelensky playing his cards close to his chest. Uh, what more is there to know about uh, his response to the Russian announcement of a withdrawal? Zelensky playing it very cool at the moment. He made an address to the Ukrainian people last night. He said that there's a lot of joy around, uh, a lot of emotion. But he, but he then added that we mustn't uh, uh, give uh, our enemy... Uh, any details of our operation in the region, although he admitted that if the Ukrainians can retake Kherson city, then it will be uh, possible for the Ukrainians then to concentrate on uh, on retaking parts of Ukraine or Sabaritsia. So, but at the moment, uh, he he's perhaps as sceptical as the rest of the world yet, and, and until Ukrainian forces actually get into uh, into Kherson city. Uh, uh, and that scepticism will remain. Well, speaking of the rest of the world, John, how is the news being received by the rest of the world? Uh, Turkey and Tayyip Erdogan, the president, uh, of course, one of Russia's uh, allies, uh, uh, has welcomed the news of the possible withdrawal, or the, rather the withdrawal announcement. Tayyip Erdogan saying that it was positive and important and it helps in mediation. The Turks having a role in mediating between Russia and uh, the, the rest of the world. So uh, I think that was a significant statement for Tayyip Erdogan uh, uh, to make. Uh, and if indeed there are back channels uh, in operation between Washington and, and, and Moscow or involving uh, Ankara uh, uh, to talk about a ceasefire, then Tayyip Erdogan's uh, 
comments are, are, are quite significant. He says it will help in, in the mediation effort, possibly leading to a ceasefire. President Biden uh, not really commenting uh, after, uh, uh, after the uh, midterm elections. He said that uh, he was defending uh, U.S.'s policy of not uh, giving Ukraine a, a blank check, check at the moment and was prepared to offer defence systems to uh, the Ukrainians, but, but not aircraft. So uh, Biden ste stepping back, perhaps wisely, uh, from commenting on what's happening in Kessel City. All right, John Cookson, Arise Chief Correspondent, thank you so much for that update as we continue to watch the story develop.